Hey all my friends out there in comic book world, this is Rob with Grey Comics. All my comic book junkies out there, I've got myself a uh, comic book haul for you and uh, a little bit of news at the end. So if you want to hang out until the until the end, you'll hear a little bit of news. You might have already heard in the comic book community, but I wanted to go ahead and throw out, throw out my, uh, my stuff on it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get into this. I, I went to a flea market that happens only a few times a year. Um, where I'm at, uh, it usually happens around the holidays and Memorial Day is one of the times that the flea market comes around. And it's a really big flea market uh, in the area, so I decided to go ahead and go to it. And I uh, I like going there because there's one one to two booths that have a lot of comic books, and it's really fun to uh, check out. So so here I go. Go ahead and start off. The first comic I got is uh, only cost me a dollar. The uh, tenth issue number one. Um, I didn't pick this up for anything in particular. It's just an issue number one. It's the um, it's the cover B. There's no si significance to it. I just saw it as issue number one. Uh, I know issue number two and three are at my local um, half price book, so I'm thinking about picking those up too. Um, once I give this a read, see if it's uh, see if it's anything I want to pick up a few issues for. It was just in a dollar bin, so I figured I'd pick it up for a dollar. Uh, next thing I picked up, uh, it's in, it's in alright shape. It was also in the dollar bin. Um, Bloodshot issue one. I know with the somewhat recent popularity with Bloodshot um, being kind of re-released, I figured I might as well pick up the first issue if I could find it. I know issue zero is the one, kind of the one to go after. But um, I found issue number one for only a dollar, so I mean, for a dollar I didn't mind picking it up. Um, next thing I got, Tomb Raider issue one. Um, one B, I believe, is what this one is, or maybe one C. It's a, it's a Michael Turner cover. I actually did not have this one, even though I collected a little bit of Tomb Raider back in the day. I actually did not have this one, um, and I wanted to get it for my Michael Turner collection. So I went ahead and picked that one up. It says this. I think I paid like three or four dollars for it. It's nothing, nothing big. Uh, next thing I picked up was uh, Marvel Team Up issue seventy nine. This features Spider Man and Red Sonia. I believe it's their first team up in Marvel Comics. I know they have a more recent one that you can find. There's a couple um, decent covers on those. I'm actually going to try and hunt down as well, but. Um, I believe this is one of the first time that Red Sonja and Spider-Man team up. This is also supposedly the first appearance of, uh, I believe it's Kunin, Kunin Gath or something like that. He, uh, apparently he's, uh, this kind of white image right here you can see in the middle. He's kind of a wizard, but from what I understand... This came out later than Conan issue 13 and 14, which I believe is supposed to be his actual first appearance. So I'm not entirely sure on that one. I've read kind of mixed things on what his first appearance is. It's listed this could be his first appearance, but uh, not too entirely worried about it. Like I said, I just picked it up primarily because it was Spider-Man and Red Sonja. Um, it, was only the, it only cost me like three bucks, so I didn't mind just picking it up. Um... Next one I got, uh, Uncanny X-Men, issue 155. I got this for a few dollars. Uh, first appearance of the Brood. Um, other than that, nothing spectacular, just first appearance of the Brood. I wanted to get it to add to my Uncanny X-Men collection, because I've tried my best to collect as much of the run as I possibly can. Um, also got another one to add to my collection, issue 166. Um, this is the first appearance of Lockheed. Don't know much about that character. I've heard of it before, but it's been quite a few years since I looked into those type of characters. I don't think that character's around anymore, but, um, first appearance of, of Lockheed, or Lookheed, maybe. I'm not entirely sure exactly how to say it. Um, and another one to fill out my Uncanny X-Men collection, issue number... 210. This one was in rough shape, but I only got it for a few dollars as well. Uh, this has a cameo of the Marauders in it. It's like one of the uh, cameos of them appear of their appearance. 
Another Uncanny X-Men title I don't have my collection, so I didn't mind picking it up. Didn't cost me a whole lot either. Uh, next comic I picked up, another Uncanny X-Men. This is issue 268. Um, I actually had this one in my collection and bought it during the last flea market that I was at. Pull this back. Bought it at the last flea market that came around in January. Now, I was pretty upset to find out that it was the reprint version which still isn't worth a whole lot you know isn't really it's there's no difference in the comic book it's not really worth a whole lot less but I wanted to have the newsstand edition of it um, and also this one is in much better condition and um, much prettier I believe <laughs> I think it looks looks a lot nicer and I didn't pay a whole lot for this one either so I was really excited to get that for for fairly cheap in fact I think I got all the uncanny X-Men's right here Plus a couple others for for only about twenty or thirty bucks. It wasn't too bad. Uh, next comic I got. This one's in pretty rough shape, but I just wanted it to add to my collection. It's a uh, to me I consider it a key silver issue, but because it's in rough shape, it's not really um, not really stupendous. But it's just nice to have um, for my collection, and that's Shazam issue number one. This is the reintroduction of Captain Marvel in the DC Universe, so it's considered his first appearance in DC Silver Age. So, and it's not, and it's not worth much in the condition it's in. Um, if it was in, you know, at least an eight or a nine, it'd probably be worth a worth a little bit. But, and this is probably, you know, with it being faded, has stains on it, it's probably a one or two. There's not nothing. It's not spectacular in, in the in the grade value of it and it's I just wanted it for my collection because it was cheap and I was able to get it for just a few dollars another comic I got for just a few dollars uh, this one's in fairly decent shape uh, Detective Comics 608 first appearance of Anarchy um, I don't know if this is ever gonna really catch um, catch up and become really popular I know there's um, debates back and forth on whether or not it's going to catch some steam. We'll see what happens, but I don't know. There was talks like Anarchy might show up in the Gotham TV series, and if that happens, it might pick up. But other than that, I don't know if it's going to pick up a whole lot of a whole lot more steam than what it's what it's got for now. Um. So next comic I got. This one is a um. Silver Age comic. I like picking up Silver Age because when I was a kid I really couldn't get Silver Age because most of them were still expensive even when I was a kid. Especially for, you know, a kid who only got a five dollar allowance. You know, you were barely buying one, two comics off the off the newsstand back in the you know, back in the nineties, so eighties uh, and nineties, so well this one is uh, Tales to Astonish issue 81 Silver Age issue. I got it for um, Seven dollars. Yeah, I think I got it. yeah, I got it for seven dollars It's in eh, it's in all right shape I and mean, the comic itself looks to be in decent shape But I wouldn't give it much more than a three to four just because it has a, a lot of fading to it um, But I do like the Incredible Hulk gun. I thought that was cool. And this is the first appearance of uh, Boomerang, which I believe is featured on the front. Don't know much about that character. I don't know if they're really anybody special, but it's the first appearance of Boomerang. So uh, take it as you uh, as you want it on that one. Uh, this next comic was in addition to those Uncanny X Men and um, and uh, a couple other comics that cost me about thirty dollars. Um, this is actually my first golden age comic and it's in it's not in very good shape it's probably in about the same shape as that shazam comic um it is together but not in the best of shape probably probably a two you know one maybe a two um at best but with the uh recent talkings about um <clears throat> excuse me about the Legends of Tomorrow, and after watching the trailer and seeing stuff about Rip Hunter, I figured this would be a, a good good comic to pick up, and I'll push that up a little bit. 
uh, Rip Hunter Time Master. This is issue number four. There's no um, nothing spectacular in here, at least not that I know of. Um, but for a uh, for it being Rip Hunter Time Master, you know, with Rip Hunter being in the Legends of Tomorrow trailer and showing that he's going to be in the new show, um, I figured I'd go ahead and pick this up because for one, it was a Golden Age comic. They sold it to me for you know probably about five bucks. Yeah, it's in rough shape, but should Rip Hunter become really popular, this would be a cool comic to have in my collection. And like I said, this is actually my first Golden Age comic to buy, which you know a lot of people tend to go after. Uh, I'm sure trying to go after more key issues when it comes to Golden Age stuff, as this one really isn't worth a lot. But you know. I enjoy uh, enjoy buying stuff for the first time. This is this actually really excites me, and and uh, and getting being able to finally get a Golden Age comic because sometimes they're really really hard to get. Uh, people tend to price them really really high, even when they're in bad shape. And this one they didn't, so I was kind of happy about that. So my last three comics were actually the comics that cost me the most on my uh, recent trip. And uh, but they were also comics that I was aiming to try and get after watching some videos and uh, and also just needing them in my uh, general collection. So first one, Uncanny X Men issue one thirty nine. Um, I got that one for let's see, um, I think I got it for eighteen dollars. So it was a little pricey, but it's in pretty good shape, I'd have to say. I mean, I'd say it's sitting in the borderline of of um, of eight, uh, from what I can tell of of what I've looked at the comic so far. It doesn't have sharp corners, but it's flat. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a whole lot of spinal roll to it. Staples don't seem to be don't seem to be rusty. Comic looks you know really pretty. So uh, and there isn't a whole lot of markings on it. So. And I would say it's probably sitting in the range of of a of an eight, eight five maybe at best. And of course, this is the issue where um, Kitty Pride slash Shadowcat join the X Men. It's also the first appearance of um, Heather Hudson, which is one of the head members of Alpha Flight. Next comic, I was really excited to get. This was actually. The comic that I went to the flea market to get, and funny thing is, I found two copies of this. This was the more expensive copy, and it's actually the one in it was actually the one in uh, worse shape. But I wanted me and my dad to both be able to get a copy of it, so um, yeah, I kind of went ahead and told my dad, "Go ahead and take the better copy. I'll take the the uh, the, the the okay." Well, Seems my dog decided he wanted to jump in the scene. Come on. Come on. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, might have to edit that a little bit. So, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, me and my dad decided to both pick up a copy of this comic. Uh, it was a comic I went to the convention to get. And, um... Okay, well, sorry about that. Um, going to edit this one. So, to finish up what I was trying to say here. Um, so me and my dad, when we went to the flea market, this was the comic I was, actually went to get. And the guy who was selling these comics that I tend to buy my, my better comics from, um, he had two of these, uh, two copies of this comic. And surprisingly, the more expensively priced one, or if expensively is a word, um, the more expensive one was actually the one in what looked to be worse shape. Um, there was one that I would say was probably in a 8.5 and then one which is the one I have right here that's probably in a 6.5 to 7. Um, so, but he had this one priced higher. I talked to the guy and said, hey, you know, this one's priced at, 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 uh, at 45. This one's priced at 75. Um, the one that's priced at 75 looks to be um, more, you know, to be in more shape and trying to figure out which one to get. And he said, well, you know, choose whichever one you want and I'll give it to you at the better price. And I said, okay. I was like, I can, uh, I can do that. And I was like, well, you know, since my, 
Dad's checking out separately. Can you give us both the same price for the same comic? And he said, yeah, that's fun. So I told my dad, I was like, here, go ahead and take the nicer one. Um, I'll take the less nicer one. Um, the way that he does it is he has the prices on the comic books and he takes half off. So he had one for 75, one for 45. He took off half of 40, of, um, 45, actually it's 48. Half of 48, so it was uh, $24 a piece. So I ended up paying $24 for this. It's in a, probably about a 7.5. Um, maybe even maybe even a 7 based on some of the bins. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not the best at grading. There's not a lot of spinal roll. There isn't a whole lot of issues with the cover on the spine side. But on the non-spine side, there's a couple little bins and then some markings on the bottom. And that's... Um, Avengers um, annual number 10 you know first appearance of Rogue and first appearance of Madeline Pryor aka Red Queen um, and I'll, I'll try and show you guys this uh, the best I can here um, so yeah come on cell phones I'm not having a good time with this one today Alright, so as you can see, it's got a really, really nice, even um, spine, but when you come down to here, you can see where there's some under rolling and a little bit of wear on the bottom, and then there is a bend in the top. But as for the rest of it, the comic's really nice, the cover's really shiny. Um, so in other, other words, the, the comic's in pretty good condition. I'm not a master grader or anything like that. Um, I'm saying it's probably going to be a seven, seven, five. Um, some of you guys out there who might have seen better grades might disagree with me, might say it's higher, might say it's lower. Um, you know, if you want to leave in the comments what you think the grade is on that one, I'll be happy to look at it and, and respond. It's perfectly fine with me. And then the last comic which was the other comic that I went to the to the um, flea market to look for uh, he also had this comic um, he only had two copies of it so I grabbed the better copy um, and of course he had it for half off so uh, he had it marked like the actual price is marked about what it's worth um, right now might be worth a little more but he had it marked at $35 which is I believe is about how much the value of it is right now after the um, recent uptick it's got but um, that's Uncanny X-Men issue 244 this is first appearance of Jubilee it's in I mean, it's in really really good shape um, I'm not going to tr bother trying to zoom this one in but you know spine is nice and flat I don't see any real spinal ticks to it the bottoms there the edges are fairly sharp um, slight spinal roll, so it's definitely not going to be, I don't think it's going to be a 9.8, but I'm really, really contemplating taking this one with me to, down to Florida here in the next couple weeks to get, um, graded. I, and there's so many comics I want to get graded now, it's getting pretty ridiculous, and I can only afford a few, um, but I'm really thinking about getting this one graded, especially since it's starting to see an incline in value due to the fact that Jubilee was announced in the upcoming X-Men movie. So her and Psylocke's both um, both her stuff is going up. And the other comic I was going to get try and get was New Mutants Annual Number 2 First Appearance of Psylocke in the Marvel Universe. That one has got a lot of value to it. But unfortunately I only found one person who had it and his copy was in fairly rough shape I would have given it probably a six or maybe even a seven and he was selling it at thirty six dollars by the time I made it to his to his booth I was already starting to run low on money I'd already bought all pretty, pretty much all these comics right here I pretty much bought them all so I was already out of money I'd already spent over what I'd planned on budgeting anyway so so I decided not to get it so that's my comic book haul for those of you who are 
nice enough to wait out till the end. Um, I do have um, one quick little announcement to to go with. Um, as seen in um, as seen in one of the videos that that I tend to watch, I tend to watch uh, We Love Comics videos a lot. He's a really cool guy. I like him. If you aren't subscribed to his channel, I'll put a link into uh, the description so you can uh, head over to his YouTube channel and subscribe to him. I recommend him a lot. He's uh, really informative. He keeps up with, with comic book history and he has a lot of really good hauls and unboxings and things like that. Um, really informative uh, page. You, if, you don't, if you don't already subscribe to him, you should. But I wanted to show you guys this. Um, he recently showed this on one of his videos that I saw today. Um, there's a new movie slash TV production in the talks. Um, and that is based on this character right here. Static. Um, static shock to all of us who uh, watched the cartoon series back in the day. Um, this is his first appearance. There are TV slash movie talks uh, that Jaden Smith is looking into filling the role of Static. Um, so this comic has immediately gained a huge uptick in the um, in the probably twenty to thirty dollar range for this particular comic. Um, I've seen it go on as high as twenty five to thirty, and as low as fifteen. Now I was fortunate enough, like you can see right here, I was fortunate enough to pick up four copies of this um, back in January. I I saw it on someone's um, channel, um, they were talking about how, you know, there were some talks like they were thinking that they were looking towards using Static in the, um, in the new, um, Teen Titans TV show they were looking at making, so, um, it saw a small uptick from being only a few dollars to about worth about 15, and then it slowly has declined back into the $10 range, and then, um, after the recent news announcement um, it has seen a huge jump uh, we love comics you know covered that in his video and if you want to watch it like I said you can um, check out the description he has more information on it but I was fortunate enough to pick up four copies of it and I want people to be extra aware of it he wanted us to share that so I'm sharing it in my video um, as a uh, as a friendly uh, thing towards him and I wanted to thank him for that so Thanks a lot guys for watching my video. Um, sorry for the quick editing. There were some interruptions in the middle of me filming so I had to kind of uh, edit around it. Uh, you might see some weird stuff. I apologize. But um, I hope everybody continues to collect and check out some more of my haul videos. I've actually got quite a few more things to show you guys that I've bought in the past few months. It's been a while since I've actually brought out a haul video. Um, so I wanted to kind of go with newest to oldest uh, hauls. I've almost got probably a good month's worth of hauls that I haven't even shown you guys yet. I mean, it's I don't even remember what haul I've shown you guys and what I haven't, so it might take me a little bit of time to figure that out and, and let you guys see what I've gotten. But there are some pretty fun things that I've picked up here or there. So, thanks a lot guys, and keep on collecting, keep on being comic book junkies, because that's what I enjoy being. Thanks guys.